In this video, we will discuss a CFD, or Computational Fluid Dynamics, analysis of a vertical axis wind turbine. The students will use ANSYS Fluid to conduct this analysis. Our problem statement reads the following. The vertical axis wind turbine is used to produce electric energy from wind. The system is designed to produce electric power for domestic applications at free wind speed ranges at 5 to 40 meters per second. Create a fluent model to show animations of velocity contour and pressure contour of a vertical axis wind turbine with fixed blade angles and fixed rotational speed of 6 radians per second. Run the simulations at 10 and 20 meters per second in inlet velocity magnitudes using blades of NACA 0012 and 0018. Run the simulations with both three blades and four blades. So first we're going to open the ANSYS Fluent Workbench, set the analysis to 2D under the Properties tab, and then right-click the geometry and select New Design Modeler. So now we're going to import our NACA blade geometry by inserting a 3D curve and selecting the coordinates file option and finding our NACA 12 file. And then create a surface uh, from the curve using the Surface from Edges tool. and then click Generate. So Next we're going to scale the airfoil down using the Body Transformation tool. Now we're going to translate the airfoil using the desired coordinates in the video. Now we're going to rotate the body. Uh, we're going to rotate it about the origin by 120 degrees. Make sure to preserve this body. Then we're going to rotate it again, this time 240 degrees, and once again make sure to preserve the bodies. Now we have created our three airfoils. Now we're going to create a circle over the airfoils and generate a surface from this sketch. And finally, use a Boolean subtract operation to separate the target and the tool bodies. Uh, So now we're going to create a C-Mesh over our sketch. The first tool we're going to use is the Art by Center option, and this will create the first part of the C-Mesh. Make sure it's properly dimensioned. Then we're going to create the second part of the C-Mesh using the Rectangle by Three Points tool. Again, make sure it's properly dimensioned. We want our C-Mesh to be much larger than our airfoils. Then we're going to draw a second circle over the initial circle from sketch one. So this will allow for one sketch to rotate about the airfoils and the other to remain stationary for the C-Mesh. And it's important to trim any excess lines that we may have. Next, we wanna create a surface from sketch and we're going to use the add frozen option Now once that's done, we want to suppress the line body and rename our surface bodies. And it's also important to make sure that we change these surface bodies to fluid. Once that's done, uh, we want to click generate so that we are ready to go to our meshing window. So these steps will be repeated uh, for the analysis of a four blade configuration, except the rotations between the airfoils will now be 90 degrees apart. Next we're going to open the meshing window. And at this point we're going to go ahead and name all of our boundaries. So this will include the inlet and the outlet. We also want to name the interface in and out. So these will be the two circles that we created that are surrounding the airfoil blades. 
And once we've named those, it's important to name all of the airfoils. So we're going to go ahead and select all of those at the same time. And we're going to name that as the airfoil wall. So now we're going to use the triangle method to create an initial surface mesh of both the seam mesh and the rotating surface around the airfoil. And now we're going to insert an edge sizing on the circle surrounding the airfoils and reduce the element size. Next we're going to alternate between hiding the rotate and the fluid body and create an edge sizing around the interface in and interface out. Finally, we're going to create one final edge sizing for the mesh on the airfoil walls. Now click Generate Mesh and we get the following mesh. And we want to make it smaller so we reduce the element size for the total mesh, giving us this mesh. And now we will refine it even further by click going to Refinement, selecting both the CMS and the rotating airfoil and setting it to a factor of two. Make sure you click update to save all these changes. You'll get this mesh and now look at the nice refined mesh along the airfoil and the body is now ready. So now we're ready to set up our simulation. The first thing you want to do before you proceed with uh, your setup is to run a mesh check. If the mesh check runs out positive and it's all good, we can proceed. Change our general steady state to a transient state. We want to change our viscous uh, model to a K epsilon model and make sure that the properties of air are observed under the materials tab. Next we want to change our cell zone condition for our rotate so that we have it rotating. I want it to rotate at a 6 radians per second. Next, go to Boundary Conditions and select Inlet. Change your Velocity Specification Method, your Velocity Magnitude, and your Specification Method. Once that is finished, make the necessary adjustments for your outlet as well. After that, go to your airfoil wall change it to moving wall, and then change from translational to rotational. Next, go to your solution methods, select second order upwind for your turbulent kinetic energy and dissipation rate. Go to solution initialization, select hybrid initialization. Go to your calculation activities, and select solution animations. Once you're at that step, insert velocity and pressure contours for two separate animations. Make sure you deselect everything when you're doing your pressure and velocity contours. Once you are done, select the Run Calculation tab. Set your parameters for your time step size, your number of time steps, and your max iterations per time steps. Then click Calculate. After the calculation is complete, go to the Solution Animation Playback tab to create your animation videos for pressure and velocity. A total of eight simulations were conducted in this analysis. The students looked at a NACA 12 three-blade and four-blade configuration at 10 and 20 meters per second inlet velocity, as well as a NACA 18 three-blade and four-blade configuration, again at 10 and 20 meter per second inlet velocities. For the purpose of our analysis, we compared a NACA 12 three and four-blade configuration at the inlet velocity of 10 meters per second, as this velocity reflects a more realistic wind condition in real life.
This is the velocity animations for the NACA 12 three blade and four blade configurations. To compare the two blade configurations, we first found the maximum velocity going over the blades for each case. The value for the NACA 12 three blades at 10 meters per second was found by going to the solution tab and then going to the velocity contour. We found that the NACA 12 three blade configuration at 10 meters per second had a maximum velocity of 17.2 meters per second. We repeated these steps to find the maximum velocity for the four blade configuration. We found that the NACA 12 four blade configuration at 10 meters per second inlet velocity has a maximum velocity of 15.7 meters per second over the blades in this configuration. Based off of these values and the formulas for a vertical axis wind turbine, we were then able to make the following conclusions. The higher velocity over the three blade configuration implies that there will be a higher power output for a given efficiency of the three blade configuration as shown by the output power equation. Likewise, we know for a given power output, the four blade configuration will have a higher efficiency because of the lower power input due to the lower maximum velocity as shown by the input power equation. Thank you for watching.